Bien, bonjour, j'ai le... Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I have the difficult task of reporting on a debate which took place yesterday on energy environment and governance. We had a very enriching meeting. The moderator, Anya Razdan, helped us to clearly identify the aims with William Ramsey as a key speaker, and then interesting presentations from Mr. Cook Singh on the example of China and Mohammed Moulin on the example of the Mediterranean Basin, and my own contribution on the role of industry and of corporations in the implementation of solutions on governance. I think three points can be noted following this roundtable is that the challenge is enormous and is very complex. What I have noted is the need for governance is quite clear, that the state of governance today is complex and difficult to describe because it is very moving, but there is some progress that's being made. Then we had three interesting examples of governance, which is not a type of global governance, but which does make it possible to move forward in the, uh, in the approach defined from the challenges. If we look at these challenges, because it's important to understand why we need governance on this subject. The field of energy, clean energy. And of course, uh, <coughs> the stake is the link between energy and global warming, which is uh, a global topic, as the name suggests. Uh, the link between energy and growth. Uh, with uh, uh, the differences that exist between uh, advanced economies and emerging economies. And the third team theme that was also discussed uh, yesterday is the link between energy and the fight against poverty to reduce poverty. And there again, uh, governance uh, was broached, uh, especially as regards financial governance. In this respect, we had a number of examples, practical examples, China globally on the Mediterranean basin which helped us to understand that in the coming 20 years, 90% of the increase in energy consumption will be in emerging economies. And if we don't do anything, there'll be an increase in temperature of more than five degrees Celsius. And if we do act, there is a consensus to limit the increase in temperature at 2% or two degrees. But nothing is sure because energy is very dependent on fossil fuels, that there is an absolute need to change the way in which we produce and consume energy. Possibly that global governance today on energy does not make it possible to reach these targets. And here Bill Ramsey had an interesting contribution on the debate of knowing are we going to reduce or simply adapt and of course the context is a moving target all the extrapolations made in the past don't necessarily show that the situation will take place as described thus considerable need of new technologies and research at the end of this recap on the actual challenges governance must be geared to how to come to greener energies. The international context of this governance and the evolution of the governance, here you can look at a half full or half empty glass. The international uh, complex is fairly dark. The European Union, I'm, I'm simply describing a debate which is looking at rather unrealistic targets, the Americans that can't get legislation through the Senate, a growth which is a bit higher than expected and has an impact on CO2 emissions, a return from Copenhagen which was very so-so, Cancun which is looking very difficult, and this is where the glass is half full. The result of Copenhagen is a greater targeting on a bottom-up approach, in other words, more local approaches, more sectorial approaches, 
uh, horizontal or transregional, which contribute to an improvement of global governance. There was a very interesting point on the correlation between energy and poverty. One should remember <coughs> that the 20 million New Yorkese consume as much uh, energy as the 788 million Africans, that 1.8 billion or 1.6 billion still have no access to electricity, and that nevertheless a great deal of subsidies are given for electricity. Is it really well addressed and should we not to review how these operations are funded? So the question is, what is moving forward? Here, we went into very interesting presentations on the possibilities for progress in global governance, either local governance with a national model. Very interesting presentation given by Mr. Kuxing on the situation of China, describing the present day situation, how China is fighting against climate change and for certain principles, principles that I won't describe in detail, but they are seven in number, that inter alia being in the context of sustainable development, in the context where you share responsibility, in a context where you adapt and contract, where you respect international aims and the international legal framework and moving ahead with science and technology. And an action plan, which is multi-formed, going from the adaptation of industrial structures to the reforestation and progress in R&D. A second example of governance at a local level or regional governance, uh, described by Mohed Moulin, describing the Mediterranean basin as a uh, site with a high challenge with an interesting combination of advanced economies and developing economies, therefore a real common interest, which could be an example of what could be done while adding to energy the environmental and water issues, introducing at the same time interesting methods for mechanisms for funding and transfer of knowledge and know-how, a regional model which is geared on synergies. It's no longer a question of determining which way to go, but rather how to get there. I gave an example of what is happening in the terms of corporations and companies. I gave the example of the cement industry, where the cement industry exists cement sustainable initiative, which is an effort of individual commitment of each company and a collective effort to identify solutions and being able to have the industry going forward for a reduction of the carbon footprint. But these are essential to identify solutions and to implement them, and I think they should be better combined and used for uh, governance and using them more upstream. This was followed by a general debate and the question of should there be a, an international structure devoted to energy and environment like WHO for health or ITU for telecoms. Here the views were mixed I and mean, this is positive because everyone feels that we need to act rather than uh, creating new bureaucratic strata, but coordination remains essential. The debate also related to the price of energy, which is not high enough to ensure effective return on investment, and you know, all the issues of quantification, where there's a real debate of knowing whether it is worthwhile building greener, greener structures. I think it is worthwhile. But this is a subject which is not fully, or an approach which is not yet fully endorsed. One, therefore, needs to be extremely realistic in the various approaches. This discussion has shown that we do need governance. We need good governance on all the topics because there are no simple answers. But we also need governance everywhere because creativity at every level is that which 
brings forward responsible partners. I found the level and quality of the debate on such a complex issue have tremendously progressed. Such a debate two years ago would not have given the same results or the same wealth of information. Recognizing the challenges, clarity of direction and which way to go, recognition of the difficulty of implementation on the issue of governance, but also progress and greater responsibility without which no progress is possible. Thank you very much.